Today, I want to talk about food addiction. And that title is misleading, but I don't know what else to call it. And I know like saying that you'll understand what I mean. But if you look at this top 10 most addictive foods, you got pizza, chocolate, chips, cookies, ice cream, french fries, cheeseburgers, soda, cake, and cheese. Nothing on that list is food. Everything on that list is infused with drugs. Those are all drugs. It, it really is. Right? And so let me just say this and get this out the way just so, you know, we're all on the same page. What is food? Human beings are frugivores. As a frugivore, like to not even get technical, just to keep it simple, right? Human beings, like we should eat, what we eat should be in its natural state, just like every other of the trillions of fucking species in nature. Everything nature eats, it eats in its natural state. It doesn't add seasoning. It doesn't cook. It doesn't combine. It eats one thing at a time in its natural state. Now, as a human being, well, if you want to be healthy, the goal should be to get as close to that as possible. The further you veer away from that, the further you veer away from nature. And the further you veer away from nature, the further you veer away from health. Because good health is natural. Sickness, disease are unnatural. Right? So I'm not telling you how to eat or nothing like that. I know what I said could be hard to hear. Just give me information. It, it is what it is. Right? So, real food grows in nature. Not in a laboratory. It's not created in a laboratory. It's found in nature. So, if what you're eating can't be found in nature, how you're eating it, then you're not eating food. And it's really just as simple as that. Right? So, as I mentioned, none of this on this list is food. Like, you don't see strawberries on there. You don't see bananas. You don't see oranges. You don't see apples, pears, plums, peaches, mango. Right? It's all bullshit. But let's get into this, though. Okay. I'm going to talk about why these foods are so addictive. What are the three ingredients that are added to all junk foods? Pause. Isn't it like, am I the only one that finds it really interesting that these foods, like everything I just read on that list included, is referred to as junk foods? Like, have you, like, I've heard that term like all my life. And I never really caught it, right? Junk. You are what you eat, right? If you feed your body junk, your body is going to become, is going to start functioning like junk, right? It's just really interesting. Like they, it's really interesting that these, the foods that many of us love to eat is called junk. But the three ingredients that are added to all junk foods that are addictive and also make you crave more of it are sugar, fat, and salt. Sugar, fat, and salt. Foods packed with these ingredients 
trigger the brain's reward system, setting up a cycle of craving and addiction. So for me, like I've experienced this, you know, for me, that's why I was eating for pleasure. I was never eating for, because I was hungry. I was eating to feel better. I was eating for comfort, for peace, for pleasure. And, and if that's why you're eating, then you have a, you have a problem. I don't know. It might not be a problem for you. For me, it was a problem because I wasn't in control of my life in that area. The pleasure that I was seeking was controlling my life. Right? Is it fucking, I was a fucking drug addict. Like, no different than a drug addict that's hooked on heroin or meth or marijuana. A lot of people don't like to say marijuana is a drug. It's a fucking drug, right? Because that's why you depend on it. That's why you need it. That's why you fucking smoke every fucking day, right? That's why when life gets hard, you smoke. It's a drug. Natural, from the earth, whatever the fuck. It's a drug. So, I noticed these things about myself with certain things that I was eating. You know, although I've, like, I've come a long way, a very long way, in terms of how, how I fucking eat. Like I wasn't eating, I haven't eaten like any dead animal flesh in I don't know how many years or consumed any dairy in some years. A lot of shit I stopped eating, but I still had a problem. Yeah, I got, I had gotten a lot better. I had made a lot of improvement, but I still had a problem. I would find myself going to the vegan restaurants every now and then, you know, and doing it more frequently. You know, I would have periods of where I would eat nothing but fruit for several days. And then I'm back in the vegan spot, getting a vegan pizza or some shit. I had a problem. Right. And you think vegan, a lot of people think vegan. Oh, that's that's good. You know, blah, blah, blah. But the vegan pizzas I was eating. They contain salt. They contain fat. They contain sugar. I realized that I was addicted. I was still suffering from different addictions. Like I would eat quinoa, right? Quinoa is food found in nature. It's not in its natural state because you got to cook it, but you can find it in nature as it is, right? But the starch in quinoa, I was addicted to it. It would make me feel and not just, you know, I, I would have to add some shit to it. Like I would have to add salt to it. I would add pink salt to it. And then I would combine that with dates. So I had the sweet and the salty and the starchy. And I had a problem. I still had a problem. I was a slave to that. So, you know, this this caused me to, you know, I just enough is enough. And so I started on a watermelon only, whatever you call it. I wasn't trying to cleanse or fast or anything like that. I was just trying to gain control of my life, right? Take my power back, beat this addiction, right? So for four days, it was nothing but watermelon. That's all I ate. And... I only stopped because I had, I had bought, I had just bought like a bunch of strawberries and blueberries. See, I, I mostly eat fruit. I was already mostly eating fruit, but I would always revert back to cooked food, vegan food. And that shit is not food. It's not. That's why it's addictive. Right? So I stopped the watermelon only to, I wanted to eat these strawberries and blueberries. I didn't want them to go bad. So today I'm doing strawberries and blueberries and I'm going to 
My plan is to finish them all and then go back on the watermelon and just do watermelon all day. Like whatever I eat, it's going to be anytime I eat, rather, it's going to be watermelon. Right. And so that's where I'm at. And I just I just learned a lot about this type of addiction, you know, throughout my journey. Because I've, I've done fruit for a whole year, like nothing but fruit, nothing but raw fruit for a whole year. And thought I was good. But I I would revert back. To like a lot of vegan cooked foods. Which just let me know I still had a problem. I'm I'm not free yet. You know, I am still. Addicted. And so I, I've been finding out, like, what's the cause of this addiction? Like, what the fuck is going on? And here you see the three main culprits. Sugar, fat, and salt. So why is pizza so addictive? Like, you're going to see, like, in all of these 10 top most addictive foods, you're going to see sugar, fat, and salt. You're going to see at least one of them and everything. And in many of them, you're going to see all three. Like pizza, whether it's the stringy, salty mozzarella cheese, the fluffy dough or the sugar in the tomato sauce. It has all three. Right. Pizza ranks first in addiction, according to a recent University of Michigan study. Pizza is not food. I love apples. I'm not addicted to them. They don't make me feel no type of way when I eat them. They don't comfort me. They don't give me peace. They don't make me feel good. But they're just really delicious. They just really taste really good. I love mango. I love orange juice. Like fresh squeeze. Like, you know, take the orange squeeze in yourself. I love orange juice. I love strawberries. I love blueberries. I love avocado. There's a lot of fruits. I love watermelon, obviously, right? I'm not addicted to any of these things. They all taste incredible to me. Like, I love the way every one of them tastes. I don't crave them. You know, if, I, if, I, if I'm having a tough day and want to feel better, I'm not running to fruit. If anything, I would run to like a vegan pizza or some shit like that, right? Just a huge difference. Like these unnatural products that they sell as food, they taste good. Fruit tastes good. But these unnatural products like pizza, they're addictive. Because you'll see. The dopamine, the reward centers in the brain, the things they trigger within us chemically create the they create the addiction. And again, it's it's not the foods that we are addicted to. It's the way they or I shouldn't have said foods because these things are not foods, but it's the way they make us feel. We're addicted to the feeling. We're addicted to the pleasure that we receive when we eat these things. And that's what I noticed about me. And that's what I want to gain control over, take my power back. I, I gotta do it and I'm doing it, period. So did I even read all of this? Pizza ranks first in addiction, blah, blah, blah. According to, okay, I read that. That's because when you eat, Pizza, your blood sugar zips up quickly, and then when it drops, you feel hungry again and want more. So pizza is the most addictive product probably in the world, at least in the United States. It's most addictive because of the sugar, fat, and salt content. Number two is chocolate. The natural brain chemical, you're going to have to help me with that. Is heightened when chocolate is consumed. 
triggers opioid receptors similar to those triggered by heroin and morphine use. Food does not trigger opioid receptors similar to those triggered by heroin and morphine use. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, chocolate triggers opioid receptors similar to those triggered by heroin and morphine. What are heroin and morphine? Drugs. What is chocolate? A drug. Like, why would it be any different? The only way you can see that differently is if you're brainwashed. That's the only way. It's similar to fucking heroin and morphine. And that chemical that starts with an E, chem it leads the brain to desire more after chocolate is initially consumed, which can lead to addiction. A lot of people are addicted to chocolate. I used to fuck some chocolate up. Everything on this list I used to eat. Everything. There's nothing on this list that I, I never ate or drank. Everything. Like, like in abundance. So, like, I, I, I could relate to it all. Chips is next. And why are chips so addictive? What do they put in chips to make them addictive? Potato chips are best known for two things. Salt and fat. Studies have shown that eating salt triggers the release of dopamine, a chemical messenger that conduct that controls your brain's pleasure center. Once your brain gets that first hit, it craves. Ain't that what drugs do? Is that not the very thing that drugs do once you take that first hit? You want more? Why? Because it feels so good. It feels you're chasing pleasure. You're chasing a feeling. Why? And this is what I notice about myself. Why am I chasing pleasure? Why am I chasing these feelings? Like what's wrong with my life right now? That I'm not happy enough or content with it as it is. Like, why am I chasing pleasure? Why am I chasing a feeling, chasing peace, comfort, happiness through food? Well, again, it's not food, but through these unnatural products, through drugs. It's literally a drug addiction. So, you know, I had to face that with myself. And, you know, for me personally, I'm like, well, shit, I don't know why I do. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. Once I became aware of that's what I was doing, you know, for me, I'm like, well, you know. I don't need to do that. Like I'm fucking blessed. Right. And then I start thinking about all the ways that I'm blessed, like I'm healthy for one. Let's start there. I have a place to stay. You know, I. I have a job. I have clothes. Right? What a lot of people may consider the basics. You know, I don't consider them basic at all. And so I just start thinking about how, like how blessed I, I already am. So it's like, how? why is this not good enough? Why do you still have to seek pleasure and chase pleasure even to your own demise? Because the things that make us feel good ruin our health the things that i was chasing i was chasing at the expense of my health right because if i'm eating this unnatural shit this shit ain't good for you this shit contributes to fucking heart disease which is the number one cause of death in america it contributes to cancer, which is number two. You eat this shit, you're going to fucking wind up in the hospital, which is the number three cause of death. Quacks, the medical system. 
It ain't going to put you on prescription drugs, which would fall under that category, the number three ca uh, cause of death. So if, like, you have a pro, like, if none of this is important to you, like, none of this matters to you, then there's something wrong. Like, why are you so unhappy that you will chase pleasure in things that are killing you, that are slowly killing you or slowly destroying your health or just affecting your health in negative ways? So I realized that, you know, I shit, shit I realized about myself. It's like, yeah, you got a fucking problem. You come a long way, but you still got a problem. You still got work to do. You know, and so I I just don't believe in half doing shit. So if I I've come this far, let's keep going. So watermelon only. And now like I said, today strawberries, blueberries. I should be finished with this today, and I'm back on the watermelon. But anyway, didn't mean to get off track there. I don't know. Maybe somebody needed to hear that. Next, cookies. This video going to be long. Cookies. <laughs> Why are cookies so addictive? The sugar, salt, and fat. Again, you have that trio. The trinity. And cookies combine to trigger various responses in the brain that are nearly identical to what a junkie feels after using drugs such as cocaine or marijuana. Now, you could say the same thing about pizza. Because pizza has that trinity, sugar, salt, and fat, right? Those three drugs combine to trigger various responses in the brain that are nearly identical to what a junkie feels after using drugs like cocaine and marijuana. Now, I've read in several places that that sugar was up to eight times more addictive than cocaine. This is not food that we're addicted to. This is, I, maybe I should have titled this video drug addiction because this is really, we're not addicted to food. We're addicted to drugs and we're addicted to the feeling that these drugs give us. Just like any other drug addict. Why is ice cream so addictive? As the sugar and fat melt on your tongue, dopamine and other feel-good chemicals get fired up. Explains today. This is because high-fat, high-calorie foods like ice cream tri trigger the pleasure centers in the brain. Much like cocaine and heroin. So now you got cocaine, you got morphine. And you got heroin that these that sugar and fat and salt are being compared to. Like you understand sugar, fat, and salt. This is not food. These are drugs too. They are being compared to cocaine, morphine, and heroin. They do similar things. They make you feel in similar ways, they trigger pleasure centers in the brain in the same ways as cocaine, morphine, and fucking heroin. These are not foods. French fries. French fries come under the category of hyper palatable foods that stimulate the reward center of the brain. You see the same common theme. It's the same thing in all of these products. They all stimulate reward centers in the brain. They all make you feel good. It's about pleasure. The feeling of pleasure. Comfort, peace, happiness. It's drugs. So, 
Uh, French fries, the hyperpalatable foods stimulate the reward center of the brain, triggering the release of feel good chemicals such as dopamine that can keep people in constant state of craving, making them addicted. Food doesn't stimulate dopamine. Like I've questioned that a lot. Like, why does it taste so good, but it's not making me feel any different? Like I said, I I was chasing a feeling. I was chasing comfort, pleasure, blah, blah, blah. So I would question, like, how can this apple be so good? How can this mango, how can this water, watermelon be so good? But I'm not feeling anything. There's, there's no dopamine being released. These pleasure centers are not being triggered or stimulated. That's what drugs do. Food does not do that. Burgers, cheeseburgers. What about cheeseburgers? Why are cheeseburgers so addictive? It should be obvious, but to some degree, but burgers have carbs, which helps the brain release serotonin and makes us happy and relaxed. Now, what is it about a burger? Let me read this other other piece down here for you first. What do cheeseburgers do to your body? They flood the bloodstream with large amounts of fats and sugars. So, and there's also salt. So, although that's not mentioned, you have, again, you have that trio, that combination of sugar, fat, and salt. Right? The bun has sugar in it. Fucking cheese, which I haven't gotten to cheese yet, but we're talking about cheeseburgers. So you got to factor in the cheese. The fucking meat has tons of fucking salt. You got the dynamic trio. Soft drinks. Soft drinks contain large quantities of sugar, which when consumed causes a rush that is extremely addictive and leads to even bigger cravings. The reward centers of the brain are activated, releasing dopamine and other hormones to create a feeling of euphoria. Now, what is it in like when you piece all this together, right now, what is it in the soda? That's doing all this. What is it in the soda that activates the reward centers of the brain and releases dopamine and other hormones that creates a feeling of euphoria? It's the sugar. It's the sugar and nothing but the sugar. Or even if it's corn syrup, a lot of a lot of sodas had corn syrup. Corn syrup is still a sugar. It's a unnatural sweetener sugar is an unnatural sweetener corn syrup is an unnatural sweetener they're both drugs cheese i was just talking about cheeseburgers excuse me A study reveals that cheese triggers the same part of the brain as many drugs New research argues that cheese is addictive in a way similar to drugs because of a chemical called casein, which is found in dairy products and can trigger the brain's opioid receptors. Now, I've seen where cheese has been compared to heroin. Cheese, that casein, it's an opioid, right? And so when you go back to cheese burgers and when you go back to pizza, which basically always has cheese on it, right? And you combine all of this together. So just take a pizza, right? Or a burger, right? Or a cheeseburger. You got, you got the sugar. You got the fat. You got the salt. And you got the cheese. 
And all of this shit is linked to like many different diseases, many different diseases. They're all, it's all linked to heart disease. It's all linked to some form of cancer, right? It's all going to put you in the hospital at some point, which is the third leading cause of death. Hospitals, quacks, prescription drugs, which, you know, drugs put you in the hospital. And then they give you more drugs to keep you coming to the hospital. Right? So that's all for this video. That ain't too bad. 30 minutes, right? Let me know if you watched the whole thing. But uh, what are your thoughts on this?